Hi, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here at our shop in Carson, California, where we're building the brand new 2020 Supra into our new drift car. We've already stripped the car down and actually made 1,000 horsepower with the engine. I'll link to those videos in the description down below if you want to check those out. But for now, this is my favorite part of the build, where we get to choose a lot of the parts that we're putting into the car and then also design a lot of the components. I want to show you guys the details on a few of the projects we have going on. Let's get started. So in this roll cage, we wanted to step it up and build us to the limit of what we can do with the most advanced tools we can get our hands on. In order for us to design the roll cage, we had to figure out what space we were working with. So Craig from Hall Designs came by and scanned the whole inside of the car. The scanning tool sends out a laser and it can actually read and save and create a model of the topography of the car. As you continue to scan the car, it continues to build that surface inside the computer. Once all the interior scan was done, we sent that information over to Igor at Triton Engineering. He's the one that actually did the CAD model for the cage to our parameters. Then once the cage was totally designed, we then emailed those prints to CalWest Manufacturing. They're the ones that actually CNC bend and laser notch all of the tubing. The roll cage is made out of inch and a half diameter, 0.095 thickness chromoly tubing. They start by taking a long stick of the chromoly tubing. The computer tells the machine how far to feed the tubing through, how much to turn it, and how the profile should be where the two pieces of tube meet. When you weld these, you want to make sure you have the least amount of space in between as possible. All of the spots where the roll cage meets the unibody chassis, we actually have plates that again were all CNC cut by the laser and then CNC bent and they fit the profile of the vehicle perfectly. Once all of the tubing was CNC notched, they then brought it over and started bending it. We had two different types of bends in the cage. One was a standard radius, like a five inch radius, and they were able to use dies on those. We have another part of the cage right by the driver's head that we wanted to keep as far up as possible that it has a really long profile to it. They actually laser cut a template and then rolled the tubing to meet that template. They were able to notch and bend all of the tubing in less than a day. Once back at the shop, you can see everything laid out how it's gonna go in the car. At this point, the cage goes in a bit like a puzzle. Each one of the plates and each one of the tubes is all numbered. So we welded most of the cage except for the base plates. So we can drop the cage back down, weld the top of the cage, and then bring the cage back up into position. And then the plates we had laser cut and CNC bent, cover up the holes and also reinforce the entire area where each one of the legs from the roll cage meets the chassis. Cody has years of experience of welding, so we brought him in to weld up the cage. Next on the list was the steering rack. In order to retrofit this rack into the Supra, we need to make a rack adapter. So I started off by measuring all the dimensions of not only the factory cross member, but the rack we're gonna install as well. Here's a little trick if you wanna find the center to center of a hole. What you do is you take your caliper and you measure the inside diameter of the hole and you zero it at that measurement. And then when you measure from the edges of both of the holes, it actually gives you the center to center. I then went into the CAD software and designed the bracket that's gonna mount the rack. Because the part is actually too big for the 3D printer, had to build it in two pieces and then glue it together. And what's great about the 3D printed part is we can actually double check that all of the models are correct before we go and machine them. Like this one, the rear rack mount, it was actually hitting the engine's oil pan once we put it in. And you can see where the two notches are and it actually dented it. Went back to the CAD software and added a couple of features that would clear the oil pan and then that was wrapped up. We have to heavily modify the subframe in order to fit the different quick change rear end that we use. The reason we use this one is because it's very strong and can deal with over a thousand horsepower, but it also has an easy to change gear ratio. The way you do that is you take off this back cover, you very quickly can change these two gears, and now you have a different ratio. Instead of before, where you actually have to take the whole differential out of the car and put a different one in that has a different ratio within it already. In order to mount the quick change into the factory subframe, we brought it over to our buddy Nate. He started off by making a fixture. That way when you start cutting it and modifying it, it won't flex or move around and it will still bolt back into the car. So Nate started by taking off a lot of the brackets that we're not gonna use and then cutting a lot of the material of the subframe off in order to fit the quick change within it. Nate had already been to the shop and we worked together on where we wanted to mount the new quick change within the car. He knew exactly where to place it. So once all the material was removed, and the quick change was mounted in the position that we eventually will want it. We then brought the whole subframe back to our shop again and double checked that everything would fit properly. There were actually several parts of the car that we had to notch in order to fit the quick change. So we went ahead and started cutting open the chassis in order for the quick change to fit. The whole box in the rear here that we're taking out is where the battery is originally located. 
The factory bushing is a one-piece Preston deal that has rubber isolators, and you want that for general street driving and the comfort. But for us, we're willing to compromise all of the comfort for performance. So after measuring all the factory rubber bushings, I designed how I wanted the solid bushings to be, and then printed them on our 3D printer. I decided to make this one a two-piece. There'll be a top and a bottom that'll press in, and then the single stock screw will hold the whole subframe back up. The suspension we got from a company called WiseFab. They actually specialize in drift suspension design, which are all the blue parts that you see. We're working with them to help evolve this kit, and with all of their experience with building the kits and our experience with running the cars, we end up with a really good combination. Once we got the suspension and the shocks and everything installed in the car, with the help of the RSR guys, we put it down with some mock-up wheels and tires. We want to get this thing on the ground for a few reasons. Number one, we need to make sure that all the suspension clears the chassis and that the tire as it goes up through a suspension travel, has total clearance within the chassis as well. In the front, we've noticed that when we're at extreme steering angles, that the large front tire actually hits part of the chassis. It was hitting enough to where we decided to take a bit of material away and then weld a plate back in to re-strengthen it. Now with the rack mounted and the suspension on, we started working on the steering arms and then the steering column this whole build, we have to make sure that we're within the form of the drift rules. Kevin from the series, the technical director, actually came down and we discussed the different parts of the car that we wanted to modify and make sure that they were legal within the rules. Things like the subframe bushings, the steering rack mount, the way we modified the wheel well in the front for the additional steering, even to the SFI steel bell housing, that's a safety component. That way, if you have a clutch or flywheel failure or something like that, then it protects the driver and it keeps it all within this black bell housing. So the drive shaft and axles were both from the drive shaft shop. They made us a carbon fiber drive shaft that goes in between the transmission and the rear end. They're lighter than steel drive shafts and they're actually stronger than aluminum drive shafts. And then both axles that go out from the rear end to the hubs and drive the wheels. All of these are racing components that can deal with tons of torque and tons of horsepower and a whole season of racing. And we found that the carbon fiber drive shaft can actually help the axles and the rear end live a little bit longer because it takes some of that shock out when you dump the clutch. So the brakes, we worked with StopTech and they already had a kit for this Supra that was pretty close. It's rare that we actually can just bolt parts onto a car, but it was great because they not only had the hat that fit, but the front caliper and the bracket as well. And for those of you with a keen eye, yes, this rotor is on backwards. I just happened to bolt the wrong side on for mock-up, but when we do the final assembly, all that stuff will be bolted on the right way. The front calipers we're gonna use are these six piston stop tech calipers. They're a lot more brake than we need, but with the big tire size that we're running, we actually have to have the car at a pretty high minimum weight, about 3,200 pounds. So on this build, we're not really looking to save a whole bunch of weight, although for such a big caliper, these are quite light. And another thing that's nice about using a larger caliper with a larger pad is with all of that pad material, we should be able to get a season or two out of a set of brake pads. The rear setup was a little bit more challenging. The hat and the rotor bolted right on with no problem, but the StopTech bracket had to be spaced a little bit differently than they had it for our WiseFab knuckles. And all of the drift cars that we build actually have two calipers per rear wheel. And the reason why is that when the driver's on his foot brake and then pulls the handbrake, he can't feel it in his foot. Or if he pulls the handbrake and then pushes on the foot brake, he can't feel it in the handbrake. And then for the second caliper, we're gonna make a CNC bracket but the red one that we have right now is just the 3D printed one uh, that we're gonna use for mock-up. With the huge rear tires that we run, we actually need a lot of stopping force in order to get them to lock up. So we build a reinforcement plate where the handbrake pivots on the tunnel. The handbrake then pushes on a rod that actuates a hydraulic master cylinder that mounts behind the driver's seat. The pedals in the car are all custom. We're using a drive-by-wire pedal, but it has a small sensor on it that tells the position to the AEM Infinity that we're gonna use. The Infinity then controls the throttle body depending on how you have it programmed between the ratio of the pedal and the throttle body opening. We then made a full bracket that holds the brake and the clutch pedals. That whole bracket then gets welded into the car at exactly the right location so it's comfortable for the driver. After determining where we wanted the fuel cell and the nitrous bottle, we then designed the whole structure of the rear. The structure not only mounts the fuel cell and the nitrous bottle, but it protects it as well. We used our fixture table in order to make the frame. The whole rear frame is made from steel. It's a mixture of box tubing and round tubing. And unlike how we CNC designed everything for the roll cage, we're using manual benders and notchers. The whole fuel cell nitrous mount took about three or four days of hand fitting, welding, and all that good stuff. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more and the rest of the videos when we continue to finish the car, please consider subscribing. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next video.